I know you can't hear it, but I can, and you're gonna have to trust me. Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In this video, I want to start off our new Open Media Vault 6 series uh, with actually a media server. Today, we're gonna take a look at a music server, but first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So like I mentioned, we are going to take a look at a media server, specifically a music server called AirSonic Advanced. It is kind of the rebirth of AirSonic that I believe was phased out not to long ago. But first, before we get into any of that, uh, I do want to give a big shout out to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. The channel actually just hit 40,000 subscribers this morning around midnight. Uh, so thank you guys so much for that. I honestly, uh, when I started doing this Docker stuff, I never, never would have imagined uh, we get anywhere near here. So thank you uh, to everybody who has subscribed for making this possible. But with that said, let's jump over and take a look at getting AirSonic Advanced set up on our new Open Media Vault 6 Docker server. So uh, to start things off, here we are on hub.docker.com. This is the Linux server uh, AirSonic Advanced uh, set up right here, their, their image that they've created for this. Uh, of course, I will have links uh, to all of this in the description down below. So definitely check that out. Uh, if we scroll down uh, here, we can see that it is uh, a free web-based media streamer. Um, you can check all of that out if you'd like to do that, but basically music server. So uh, if we scroll down a little further, uh, it says supported architectures. They use uh, x86-64, ARM64, and ARM HF. Uh, they use a Docker manifest to support multi-platform awareness. There's a link there if you want to read more about how they manage to do that. Uh, below that, uh, of course, they've got the architectures that are supported. Version tags, we're going to use the latest. Um, so basically, we're going to scroll down. We're gonna take a look at this usage area right here where we've got a Docker Compose uh, where it says actually recommended. This is what we're gonna use here. So uh, if we kind of start at the top, uh, we're gonna take a look at basically version is 2.1. Uh, different uh, Docker Compose versions have different uh, capabilities. Version 2.1 is very standard. Uh, it does everything that we're gonna need for this setup. Uh, below that, below that version, we've got services, um, and below the, or in that services section, we've got AirSonic Advanced. Uh, to set up AirSonic Advanced, we're going to take a look at our image here, uh, which will be um, uh, the Linux server, uh, Linux server AirSonic Advanced image. We're going to give the container name uh, a, a very similar AirSonic Advanced name. Uh, we're going to have some environmental variables next. We've got a user ID and a group ID. Uh, these are the defaults uh, of 1000. We're going to talk about how to get that set up uh, for your specific instance here. Uh, but those are not probably the ones you're going to want to use. So uh, below that, we've got a time zone. Uh, we've got a context path. Basically, what's your base URL going to be? Uh, it's optional. You don't have to put that in, but we're going to. Uh, the Java ops, we're going we're gonna to leave that out. We're not ever going to use that. Uh, below that, we've got some volumes. Uh, basically, this is where everything is going to get stored, uh, with, uh, both for your configs as well as your media. Now, uh, in our previous setup, when we were setting up Open Media Vault 6, we did create a couple of different shares. <clears throat> uh, one was for configs, uh, so I'm glad that we've got that in here. Also, we've got one for, um, in here that we'll need for music. Now, we didn't set that up, so that's one of the things we're going to tackle in this is adding another share to our system specifically for uh, music in this case. So uh, we're going to have that. Um, I'm not going to set up playlist podcasts or other media uh, just because I want to make this a simple uh, music server for my setup here. Uh, so we're just going to use the config and music volumes. Everything else can go away. Uh, we're going to use port 4040. Uh, if this is a brand new server and you're not using port 4040, well done. This is going to work just fine. If not, we can change port 4040 to something else. However, uh, if we do that, we only want to change uh, the first half that I've got highlighted there. The second half is the internal port. Don't mess with that one. Uh, so only change the first half of that. 
Uh, below that, we've got devices uh, for a sound device. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, access, accessing this via the browser. We don't have a sound card or anything like that in our server, so we're not going to use this device. And again, here it says optional. And then restart less stopped, basically. If it runs into a hiccup or whatever it needs to restart, by all means, go ahead. Um, unless, however, I say don't do that. Unless I manually stop it, then it won't restart. So that's kind of the Docker Compose setup that we're gonna use here. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do is actually copy all of this, uh, including the three dashes up at the top. We're gonna jump over to Portainer. Um, basically from here, we can click on Stacks. We can click on Add a Stack. Uh, of course, you can add that or access that here on the left as well. Uh, I'm just gonna paste that in there and I'm gonna grab uh, that little bit up here to put up in the name at the top. So let's talk about some of the things we're gonna change in this Docker Compose uh, setup here in this stack like Portainer likes to call it. Uh, the first thing we wanna change is the PUID and PGID. So the way we're gonna do that is we're going to click down here, we're on, the, uh, on our terminal. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to SSH uh, as a root. Uh, into uh, our Studio Lab, uh, whatever our IP address is or our host name is. I'm going to type in Studio Lab dot local, and then I'm going to add dash p uh, two two three four. Uh, because when we set up Open Media Vault 6, we changed the uh, SSH port from 22 to 2234. Uh, so we need to reflect that in our login here by adding dash P space and then whatever port we changed uh, our SSH port to when we set this up. If you didn't change your port 22 to something else, you don't have to put this in. I uh, just, I did change it, so I've got to do this. I'm going to press enter. Hey, I'm going to connect here. I'm going to say yes, that's fine. Uh, and then like so, and now I'm logged in and ready to go here. Uh, so I'm gonna clear my screen. I'm actually gonna make this bigger. So in order to get the PUID and PGID that we need for this setup, uh, what we're gonna do is type in ID and then space, and then we're going to put in the username that we use to log in to Open Media Vault. Whatever username you've got there, it's probably admin. So in that case, we're just gonna type in ID space admin and hit enter. And our UID is 998 and our GID is 100. Uh, that's gonna translate over here to PUID uh, will be 998 and our GID will be 100. Again, uh, our time zone uh, for me is not uh, Europe. So I'm gonna change it to America slash, oops, Denver. I'm close to Denver, so good enough. Our base URL, I'm gonna go ahead and take that out. I'm gonna type in HTTP uh, and then studio lab.local. And then for our Java ops, we're gonna go ahead and take that out. Now, for this context path, you'll put in your, uh, your URL, not mine. Make sure it's yours. Um, and so our path to our config, uh, let's actually jump back over here to Open Media Vault. And here we are, we're in our configs. If you don't know how to get there, come over here to Storage, click on Shared, uh, yeah, shared Folders, and then you'll be brought to here. So we've got uh, our configs right up here that is shared. I'm gonna copy that right there just by clicking the Copy button. We're gonna jump back over to here. And then I want to modify, again, just the first half of this. Um, so I'm going to uh, add a slash um, uh, air sonic. Uh, you can put advanced if you want. I'm not going to, but air sonic is good enough. And then for our music, what we want to do next is actually come back over here and add a new shared folder. So we're going to click on create. Uh, we're going to call this music. And then our file system will be the one that we've already got created on SDA1 in my case. And then for, uh, for permissions here, uh, I'm just gonna make everybody able to read and write this. Uh, so anybody that is on my network can upload music to uh, the music server. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. I'll click on save. Great. Uh, now the next thing I wanna do uh, is actually come over here to services, go to SMB CIFS um, and add a share here. We've got data. We also want to add uh, music to this. So we're gonna select our music folder there. Uh, public is going to be guests only. Uh, again, because I want anybody who, who is on my network to be able to upload music. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can make this so that it's uh, guests allowed or uh, what was the other option here? Uh, no for public. Um, make that choice however you'd like to make it. But again, this is music. I want anybody to be able to upload music. So I'm gonna make this guests only. Um, everything else here is fine. So I'll go down and click on save. And uh, then now that I've got those two things done, I can come up here and click on uh, apply and then click confirm and click yes. 
and we'll give this just a minute to, to do its thing here. Okay, so now we have our music folder shared as well. So in order to make sure that that really is shared the way we hope it is, we're gonna open up a, uh, a window here. I'm gonna do demo backslash uh, studio lab, like so, and here's our music folder. Awesome, that opened up, we're good to go. So I say that. The next thing I wanna do is add some music to this thing. So I'm gonna open up a new tab here and I'm gonna go over to, uh, to my other server and I'm gonna find my music. And then I'm just gonna grab, I don't know, those first four artists there. Again, this is demonstration. Uh, so I'm gonna just drag that over there. And here we are, uh, everything is copying. That means our read and write permissions are set up properly for what we wanna do here. Uh, so I'm gonna give this a second to finish up. Outstanding. So now what we wanna do is actually come back over to storage, uh, come to our shared folders. Now that we know that everything is working appropriately, uh, we can come over here to our, our, our music shared folder, click on copy to clipboard, uh, come back over here to portainer. I'm just gonna paste this in right there. And then I'm just gonna put uh, hashes in front of those uh, just to comment them out uh, in case we decide to come back and add them later. Uh, they're still there. So that's all we're going to do there. And then again, same thing with our devices. I'm just going to comment that out. Actually, same thing there, just so we don't have any uh, where, hey, you you declared a device. We didn't declare a device. We're going to uh, alleviate that immediately. So uh, we've commented out playlists, podcasts, other media, and devices. Uh, so at this point, we should be good to go. Um, everything else here looks good. Uh, so let's go ahead and click on deploy the stack. A few moments later. Okay, so it says the stack was successfully deployed. That's good. So let's go ahead and click on our stack here. Uh, it says it's running. Uh, that all looks good. Let's actually check our logs. Uh, we can do that by clicking on uh, the little logs icon right there. Um, well, let's, let's see if it worked. Wah, wah. So I tell you what, let's come back over to here. Let's go to Airsonic Advanced. Let's open our editor. And then just for the sake of this, what we're gonna do is replace all of these URLs. It may, it may actually be having a fit here because I didn't have uh, anything set up for playlists and podcasts. Uh, we're gonna verify that just here real quick. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on update the stack again. All right. Oh, that, that's my fault. I uncommented it, but left it. Uh, update the stack now. So uh, we'll give this a second. Hopefully we don't get run into any other uh, issues here. Blah, blah to you. Okay, there we go. So uh, I did actually end up finally getting this to work by uh, going over to the stack and commenting out uh, the URL. I, I don't know why that, that was throwing, giving us issues here, uh, but here we go. Uh, so our, our username and password will both be admin. Okay, so here we are. Uh, first things first. Uh, change your admin password. So let's do that real quick here. So what we better do is click on add credentials. And we're gonna put in some uh, uh, some credentials, really. All right, then we're gonna click save. <clears throat> awesome, so settings were saved. I'm gonna close that like so. And then if we come over, uh, over to here, we're just gonna make sure that everything is working. I wanna make sure my music is turned down. And my desktop audio is off, that's good. Uh, let's play that. Okay, so I know you can't hear it, but I can, and you're gonna have to trust me. Uh, it is working, uh, everything is going along just fine there. Um, so so that's that's working. Now, let's take a look at some other stuff here. Um, so basically playlists, it can find uh, playlists in here, uh, where we, wherever we mapped our playlists. Uh, podcasts, if you want to map podcasts, you can do that. Bookmarks, uh, if you've got, uh, so basically this is like the, the recently played bookmarks. Uh, you could star songs if you wanted to have them show up here as well. Um, status, let's take a look at status. We'll come back to settings here in just a moment. Uh, here we can see um, traffic by user. Uh, we can kind of get an idea uh, of, of the basic stats of the server, uh, that sort of thing. All of that is in here. Uh, let's see, let's just click on more. Let's see what more does. Oh, you know what, let's pause that like so. There we go. So more um, basically lets us uh, adjust settings. I like for shuffle play here. Airsonic apps, if you've got one for your phone, uh, basically you can uh, you can click that into a new window and there are apps for uh, all your different devices here as far as what's available. Uh, so definitely check that out if you want to be able to stream music to your phone or tablet or whatever. 
uh, you can monitor uh, the real-time uh, stats. Again, that's going to bring us over here, I suppose. Podcasts, you could upload podcasts or upload. Oh, sorry, I lied. Podcasts are available here. You can upload files here if you wanted to do that. Uh, we've got uh, keyboard shortcuts down here as well that you can take a look at. Um, do, do, do I really, I really think that's about it. Uh, you can create new playlists. You can import playlists. Uh, you can uh, get an idea of what, what, how many artists you've got, how many albums, how many songs, how many hours worth of music you've got. All of that is available in here. This is a very intuitive uh, interface they've built. And I really do appreciate that. Uh, let's come back over here to my user account. We'll give this a second. Uh, when you're in here, um, you can uh, basically, this is going to be the administrative stuff uh, for the server, not necessarily my user account. I misspoke when I said that. So uh, basically you can uh, what, decide what you want to display um, on any of these different pages. Uh, everything from the header row and track number to when it was last played, scanned, created, changed, whatever. Uh, you can change uh, the default language, the default theme. Is there a dark theme? Is there a dark theme? Ooh, back in black, maybe, maybe. Hmm, let's try Midnight Fun. And default album list, random. Um, I'm gonna say recently added, like so. Oh, <clears throat> so there's more down here. Um, you can show other users what you're playing. You can notify of new versions. Uh, if you want to connect with Last FM, uh, listen brains or podcast index, feel free to do that. Uh, you can enable keyboard shortcuts. Uh, I'm not going to because I'll screw something up, I'm sure. Personal images, you can upload your own custom image uh, or you can use, uh, let's use that guy like so. And then um, um, I don't see, I don't see a save button. Does it save automatically? It must save automatically. Oh, because I didn't click the save button. Ooh, that's, oh, that's ugly. I don't like that at all. Jeez, uh, let's, let's try back in black. And then we'll scroll down and click the save button. Okay, I can deal with that. That's fine. <clears throat> so adjust uh, your display however you'd like to do that. Uh, again, credentials, users, players. Um, so credentials and users are pretty self-explanatory, I would think. Um, let's see, you can use a web player, an external player. Uh, if you use Jukebox, I believe you will need to use uh, the sound card option under devices in your stack, your Docker Compose. Uh, so make sure that you uh, adjust that accordingly. Um, <clears throat> So let's see, uh, Sonos, apparently you can connect to Sonos. Uh, that's cool, I'd actually like to get some Sonos speakers, but I'm broke at the moment um, and pretty often and honestly can't justify the cost. So uh, there's that. Uh, let's see, let's take a look at advanced. So if you wanted to uh, set up uh, email notifications, you could absolutely do that. Uh, so for the longest time, I've been using uh, Gmail to handle my email notifications. However, based on something I read recently, that's going away in May. So uh, I'm thinking about switching over to a different service um, and, and kind of changing up my notification system. Uh, so let me know if you're interested in a video about how to do that, um, because I think that will be, I think probably a lot of you guys use uh, Gmail for your notifications, for your self-hosting. So let me know if you're interested in a video about switching that over to something else. Uh, I've got some ideas. Let me know what you think. Um, but I think, honestly, um, that kind of covers everything. We've got our music set up. We've got our music uh, library set up. We got all of this up and running fairly quickly, all things considered, uh, minus some troubleshooting that, uh, that I had to go through. But very, very simple to set up. Uh, super, super happy to have this up and running on the new uh, Open Media Vault 6 uh, platform here. If you guys found the video helpful, it would mean a lot to me and would actually help the channel out quite a bit if you give the video a thumbs up. Um, and also I want to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys so, so much for your continued support. It really does mean the world to me that you guys believe in my channel enough to actually support me financially. So thank you uh, for doing that. Uh, I guess with all that being said, though, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.